Canon or not, one of the most mysterious eras in the history of Dragon Ball is GT's final time skip. With 100 years that have passed, the ending of GT glanced over details that would take an entire series to explain. But what are some key questions that were lost in this timeline? And what are some logical ways that we can answer these mysteries? Well, if you're curious about this topic, you clicked on the right video. So to begin, we must first ask ourselves how peaceful the Earth was over the 100 year time skip. 100 years is a lot of time, and it is possible that a major threat could have threatened Earth. However, based on the fact that the Earth was still around 100 years later leads us to two potential outcomes. Either there was no major threat to the Earth over the 100 year time skip, or whatever threat emerged was stopped by the forces on Earth without Goku's help. In addition, we must also remember the Namekian Dragon Balls. Even though the main cast agreed to protect Earth without relying on Shenron's help, in case of an emergency, the Namekian Dragon Balls would still be around if they were in a pinch. Also, if there was a villain that would threaten Earth, it would most likely come from outer space. As we saw in the beginning of GT, powerful characters like Legic and others do exist throughout the galaxy. So the question isn't if a villain could attack Earth, but would they be strong enough to actually win? And all evidence points to an astounding no. Now the next mystery we must discuss are the missing family members of Goku Jr. and Pan. If you actually take a look at the diagram on the screen, Pan was stated to be Goku Jr.'s great-great-grandmother, and in Dragon Ball GT's A Hero's Legacy, Goku said that Goku Jr. was the grandson of Pan's granddaughter. This means that there are seven generations of family that span between Goku and Goku Jr. But why is this all important? Well, it's because absolutely none of these family members are seen or directly referenced in the show. In fact, in GT's A Hero's Legacy, it's heavily implied that Goku Jr. lived with Pan alone. Evidence for this would be the fact that Pan was dying and no one else seemed to be aware that she was in such a situation. Also, when Goku Jr. came home from school, he went directly to Pan's house showing that she was his guardian. So we can safely say that Pan married a normal human male, but in terms of Goku Jr., it's implied that his family is either absent or dead. Were they killed when a threat came to Earth and were not revived? Did they die of old age because Pan is already so old herself? There are way too many generations of family for Goku Jr. to be absolutely alone by himself and Pan, and this is why it's a huge mystery. And while we're on the subject of family, we must talk about Vegeta's family line. While we are unsure where Bulma's descendant who was given the name Bulma Lei and the English Funimation dub credits comes from between Trunks' family line or Bra's family line, there's one thing we can infer about her and her character. And this is the fact that the Capsule Corporation has remained a technological powerhouse for over a century. However, on the other hand, it seems as if Goku's family has drifted away from Vegeta's family over this century. Bulma's descendant seems to be unaware of who Pan is when she reveals herself, and when we look at the interactions between Goku Jr. and Vegeta Jr., they clearly aren't as close as Goten and Trunks were in Dragon Ball Z based on their interactions. We can say this because neither of them were aware that the other could turn Super Saiyan, but if there was one link that would have kept the family somewhat close up until a certain point, it would have been Goten and Trunks. But we can all agree that after the World Tournament that Goku Jr. and Vegeta Jr would have definitely have established a friendship and rivalry that would have continued throughout their entire lives. But as we jump on to the next mystery, we must ask ourselves a very hypothetical question. And this is whether or not Master Roshi and Baba are still alive. Now, if you've originally read the Dragon Ball manga, you would know that Master Roshi is biologically immortal because of the sacred immortal phoenix that gave him immortality. If you are more familiar with the English dub, it was referred to as an immortal elixir or the fountain of youth. Either way you slice it, Master Roshi was already centuries old when he met Krillin at the beginning of Dragon Ball. At the end of GT, both Krillin and Roshi are old men reminiscing about the old days on Roshi's island. And when you consider the fact that Baba is Roshi's sister and constantly goes to the afterlife, she too is most likely immortal. 
So would Roshi and Baba be alive 100 years later? Well, all evidence leads to an astounding yes. Unless Roshi died of some other cause, he should theoretically still be around and was simply just not mentioned by the narrator when he was talking about Pan being the final character that was alive from Dragon Ball GT. So we can definitely say that Master Roshi and Baba are definitely still alive after how much time has passed. But as we move on to a much younger character, we have the fate of Oob. Now after fusing with Majin Buu, it's interesting to see how that may have affected Oob's mortality even if he is a normal human. Because he still is a normal human and Majin Buu mostly gave him a power boost and abilities, Oob would have died of natural causes especially since Oob was one of the main characters in GT and was not mentioned, as opposed to being a side character like Master Roshi who, who could have still been alive. Also, one assumption that we could definitely say about Oob that makes sense about his character is that Oob most likely would have been the runner-up in several world tournaments until Mr. Satan died or retired. The reason being is that Majin Buu once told Oob to throw a fight for Mr. Satan to win in Dragon Ball GT. And when you couple this with the fact that Oob comes from a poor village that Goku said Mr. Satan would help ever since the ending of Z, you have to consider the situation for both sides and say that that Oob would be able to get a lot of prize money and Mr. Satan would be able to keep his reputation. And last but not least, we could definitely squash the fan theory that Oob and Pan had a child together. The show glanced over who Pan had a child with because they didn't feel it was important, and if Oob had a child with Pan as we saw in various sorts of fanfiction, that major detail definitely would have been mentioned. So I'm sure we can all safely confirm that Oob and Pan did not have a child together. However, this all leads us to a major question as to whether or not Earth created a new force of super fighters to fight off evil. And even though it's video game knowledge, in Dragon Ball Online, it was revealed that Gohan wrote a book about key control after the events of Dragon Ball GT. After this, Goten and Trunks reopened the Crane Hermit and Turtle Hermit and a sword training school for normal humans to go through advanced fighting training. And despite this only being canon to a video game, this actually seems like a very realistic thing that could have happened in that universe. Gohan in Dragon Ball Z did a fantastic job in instructing Videl how to fly, and with the intelligence and experience of Goten and Trunks, teaching normal humans how to become advanced fighters can truly protect the Earth for future generations. And who knows, maybe some of these super fighters could use their knowledge of fighting for their own wicked ambitions, as not everybody who would have taken Gohan's training would have used it for good reason. But as we move on to the actual final fight of Dragon Ball GT, who won the battle between Goku Jr. and Vegeta Jr.? As brief as that fight was, evidence actually leans towards one of those characters winning, and that character is Vegeta Jr. Unlike Goku Jr. who is implied to not have any other family members besides Pan, Vegeta Jr. likely has other living relatives from Vegeta's bloodline that are alive to help him train. In addition, because the Capsule Corp still exists, he can always use the Gravity Room, albeit a much more advanced Gravity Room, to push himself significantly more than Goku Jr. could. However, Goku Jr. may have had more potential than Vegeta Jr. based on the fact that he gained the Super Saiyan transformation with very little Saiyan blood and basic training with an older Pan. Keep in mind that he wasn't even able to fly in a hero's legacy, but was fighting on par with the Super Saiyan Vegeta Jr. at the end of Dragon Ball GT. And I think the best way that you could compare these two characters would to be analyzing the potential of Goten versus Trunks. Trunks is already a little bit stronger, but you can argue that Goten may actually have more potential. Coming up next on our list is the future of the Saiyan race. As more humans mix with Saiyan DNA over time, will Earth's population eventually spread out to the point where Saiyan DNA is much more common amongst the masses? And when you consider the fact that Bulma's descendants would know more about the Saiyans than anyone else on the planet Earth, we could immediately see a plot point where a scientist stole DNA and artificially created a villain on Earth. In the case of Dragon Ball Online, it was revealed that most of Earth's population could turn Super Saiyan because of the genes of Goku and Vegeta's descendants. So in theory, if the descendants of Goku and Vegeta kept breeding, there would no doubt be a massive population on Earth that would have Saiyan blood over time. And this is a fascinating concept that could have been explored. 
climbing towards our next topic, we have the future of Earth's Dragon Balls. Now as we see in GT's A Hero's Legacy, the Dragon Balls made a return as Shenron said it would after a lot of time has passed. And the reason why this is important is because since the Dragon Balls have returned, the history of Dragon Ball moving forward can mysteriously repeat itself. You see, originally in Dragon Ball, the entire adventure was triggered by Bulma's search for the Dragon Balls, and when evil forces such as the Red Ribbon Army, Emperor Pilaf, and King Piccolo got involved, a greedy race to obtain a wish all began. Now fast forward to the end of Dragon Ball GT. With Goku Jr. finding one Dragon Ball, all it takes is a Dragon Radar from the Capsule Corp and some other evil genius and the quest can all begin all over again. As soon as the Dragon Balls would have returned, the selfishness of mankind would have created a major conflict for the Dragon Balls once again. And thus, because Goku told Goku Jr. that he needs 6 Dragon Balls to make a wish at the end of a hero's legacy, he essentially created a loop and created the exact problem that he fought against his entire life years before. And this would ultimately lead to Shenron having to take away the Dragon Balls just like he did when he left with Goku. And when you think about how Goku might have indirectly caused history to repeat itself with new characters, this is a fascinating way to look at how GT could have turned out. In any case, the biggest question we should ask ourselves is what happened to Goku at the end of Dragon Ball GT? Now, years ago, we discussed in a theory video called Was Goku Dead at the End of Dragon Ball GT? What would have happened to him? And when we look at the evidence in the original Japanese dub, the evidence is overwhelming that Goku actually died. People constantly asked Goku, are you, as if they were trying to ask Goku if he was dead. In addition, Goku appeared at the end of GT and in A Hero's Legacy being a full-grown adult. Since Goku was around Pan's age when he left with Shenron, and Pan is over a hundred, Goku would have already have been extremely old if not dead at this point naturally, even if Saiyans do age differently from the way humans are supposed to age. And when you look at GT's A Hero's Legacy, there was a scene where Goku Jr. said, Kami, why aren't you helping my grandma live and why aren't you summoning Shenron when he got one Dragon Ball? Now when you analyze this scene deeper, the word Kami directly translates to God in Japanese. And when you look at this from what happened directly after, right after Goku Jr. was talking to the one Dragon Ball, Goku shows up and gives him advice, and we also see Pan directly coming back afterwards as if she was healed. So it's as if Goku was God in this situation, healed Pan, and also explained to him what he needs to have all seven Dragon Balls. So essentially, when you look at this metaphorically, Goku became the god of Dragon Balls. We definitely see him at the end of Dragon Ball GT's The Hero's Legacy looking out at the audience in the sky as if he's looking out on the world and all of the generations that came after him. And the mere fact that Pan could see him at the end of the series shows that he chooses when he appears and leaves. And if you love other Dragon Ball GT topics, take a look at a theory analyzing was Goku dead at the end of GT, in addition to what if Pan turned Super Saiyan or what if Bra was actually a fighter. And until next time, stay cool and stay safe my friends.